You've probably used Microsoft Paint a million times, but I'm betting you've never even seen Paint 3D, nor know how to use it. Today, we're gonna change all that. Microsoft's Paint 3D will become available in the Creators Update later this spring, but if you're part of the Insider program, you can start using it now. What I'm gonna show you today is how to make a simple scene in Paint 3D, creating some digital objects, painting them, inserting them in a scene, and even using Microsoft's cool community site Remix 3D to save us some time. We're gonna skip the introduction videos for now, but I'd recommend you take a look at them when you have a moment. Let's go ahead and start a new project. Now Paint 3D is essentially like a digital diorama. There's a couple of things that you can do. You can actually create 3D digital objects and you can place them in a scene. And what we have here is actually the only 2D object in Paint 3D. This is the canvas. And the canvas is our digital backdrop. So what we can do is we can actually draw on it. Let's go ahead and draw a little wave background here. And we can paint it as well. But we're not actually here to create 2D objects. We're here to create 3D objects. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, if we're creating a nautical scene, the first thing we'd like to do is to actually sort of extend this sea into the 3D space. So the first 3D object we're actually going to make is going to be the surface of the sea. And what we're actually going to do first is create a 3D cube. And you can see you can rotate it here. And to create the surface of the sea, we're actually going to shrink it down to essentially a flat plane and then expand it. And then just again, sort of shrink it down here. Now, if it gets everything gets a little bit too compressed, there's a zoom button down here and you can actually shrink that down. What we're gonna do is we're gonna actually <coughs> put our C here. Now, we've got our surface of our C. The next thing we wanna do is actually put a couple of islands in that. And the way we're gonna do that is to use this nifty little tool called the 3D Doodle. Now, the 3D Doodle allows you to get some, some personality into your scene. So what we're gonna actually do is we're going to draw a little island. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna take this 2D object and essentially blow it up into, I guess you call it a pillow. And we're going to paint it brown like an island. And then we're going to, oops, sink it into our ocean. <clears throat> so you can see that big sort of potatoy thing now looks more like a traditional island. And to get a better look at what we've done, we're going to actually rotate this a little bit. We'll shrink it down. And create another digital island as well. Create something a little bit more like a banana shape. Tighten it up. Put it over our surface. Paint it. Okay, now the problem that you'll immediately discover is that aligning everything is a real hassle. <clears throat> and in fact, it's gonna take up, <laughs> it can take up quite a bit of time in our video. So we may need to speed things up. But we'll just go ahead and put this here. and we've created a second island just like this. Now, the third thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to paint our islands. And to do so, there's a couple of different ways we can do it. We can actually use the fill button and paint it brown like we've done before, but we're actually gonna do something different. Paint 3D has this wonderful technology called stickers. And in fact, if you have a 3D model, you can go ahead and add eyes and mouths to it instead of having to paint it on manually. But it also has textures. In this case, it has a sand texture. 
And what we're going to do is we're actually going to put that sand texture and apply it to each of our digital, digital islands. And then we've got it the way we want. We're going to stamp it. And then we're going to apply the texture to this other island. Stamp it. And we have two digital islands. And again, we're going to head, make sure everything is lined up. And you can see everything is <laughs> lined up, just poking out of the water. Next, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to make a complex object with two shapes, a pole, which is going to be a long skinny cylinder, and then a sign with a flat surface above it. So let's go ahead and create our pole. And we'll color that. Color gray. And there's going to be a sign at the top, which is going to be a small rectangle. Okay. Now a sign is flat, so what we're going to do is we're going to flatten that sign, and then we're going to rotate it, and then move it up just so the top fits on top. <laughs> now the nice thing about Paint 3D is that it actually will helpfully, and in some cases, orient everything together to make sure everything fits without having you to, without forcing you to fiddle with it a whole bunch. But when you're creating a complex object, what you want to do is you want to make sure that everything fits together. So we use what's called multi-select. What I just did is I actually control clicked both the sign as well as the pole and made sure that the two objects were joined as one. So again, we're going to quickly paint this white, make sure we have a nice looking sign. Control click both of these. And we're going to move them to our island. Now, perfect. Again, we're going to do a quick check to make sure everything is pretty well oriented. It seems pretty good. Now, to write on the sign, we can do a couple of different things. We can go ahead and use this text button up here. I haven't had a whole lot of luck with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and apply a sticker to it. And the nice thing about stickers is you can actually choose your own sticker. So I actually created a sticker in paint. And then I'm just going to import it right here. Bring it up to my sign. And align it so it looks pretty decent. Stamp it on. And voila, we have a sign that says danger shark nearby. Now, I don't see a shark in the scene and I am much too lazy to actually create this shark. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to cheat. We are going to use Microsoft's nifty Remix 3D site. And Remix 3D houses all of this wonderful third party art uh, that's created by people with a lot more artistic talent than I have. And the nice thing is, is that it's got a search bar right up the top and we can search for the object that we're looking for. In this case, a shark. So in a couple of minutes, we've got sharks that we can use. And let's go ahead and use this hammerhead shark right here. Now we can go ahead and save it to a board, which is in fact is sort of like a little bookmark. Uh, but we can actually just dr bring it directly into Paint 3D, which is what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and close up Remix 3D. And again, we have to go back and orient this shark properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to get everything looking like this. Now our shark is kind of poking out of the water. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the shark and kind of move him in. <clears throat> so look, there's our shark. He's poking his head out of the water. So that looks fairly realistic. Now I want to add one more thing to our scene. Let's go ahead and go back to Remix 3D. And let's give it a, a little bit more of an islandy look and add a palm tree. So we'll go ahead and search for a palm tree. There's one that looks good. We'll just grab it and bring it right into our scene. And then go ahead and plant it right on our island. <clears throat> now, this actually looks not too bad, actually, for a couple of minutes work. So at the end, we have a couple of options. Of course, we can save it locally to our hard drive, but just like everyone else, we can go ahead and publish it to Remix 3D. 
Now at this point, you're gonna say, hey, this is great. Let's go ahead and publish it to Remix 3D. Well, there's a catch. And right now it's right here. The current file size, 21.6 megabytes versus 64.0 megabytes. If that file size goes above 64 megabytes, Paint 3D seems to have some problems saving it to your local hard drive and it won't publish it to Remix 3D. So don't go hog wild and bring in all this cool 3D art to your scene because it won't make a look of difference if you can't actually save it or for the world to be able to see it. In this case though, Remix 3D should be happy. We've got a file size that's under the limit. We'll go ahead and upload it. And when we do, we have a couple of options. The first thing that we should be able to see when this is completed is we should be able to pick uh, the lighting backdrop and we'll have a few options from which to choose different colors to give it sort of a, a nice look we can go with green or some sort of apricot uh, let's go with uh, a sky look then we go ahead and from there we can simply name it uh, if I could type Give it a tag, call it PC World. <clears throat> and voila, we've got a scene. Not too bad for a few minutes work. You can go to Replay 3D and check it out. You can go ahead and search for content tagged PC World and go ahead and remix it yourself. That's been our instruction on how to use Paint 3D. Thanks for watching.